Hello there, my love. Podcast show time. It is nice outside today, as I told you guys. Then now, it's beautiful. All the snow is gone. But now we're going to ask some questions here. We had some power out for a while. So, and the power been out for a while. Give me more. You said snow will be up here sometime in May as well. Seen a snow, snowstorm on the first weekend in May one year. Really? Yeah. It wasn't a lot like last week, and it didn't last as long. Actually, this didn't last long either. But, right. But uh, it was. Uh, it stuck. It was. It was cold enough that it stuck. And well, it broke down a lot of trees as well. A lot of power went out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, one of the big ones, I think it was Lee Energies out of Wisconsin, had 100,000 customers out between um, the Upper Peninsula and, North, and Wisconsin. Um, and then I read online at one of the power company websites that they were, they were able to get the power back on as quick as they might because um, the substations where they're interconnected with other power companies um, suffered some kind of damage. I don't know what, it was trees or you know shorted out or what happened. but um, So they would get their lines fixed and then they couldn't route it through to the to all the customers. So it was a pretty nasty storm as far as power was concerned. There's still some people yesterday that were without power from the storm that happened on when was it? Uh, Monday was it? Yes. Yeah. So that's pretty unusual for the UP. In Detroit though I've seen areas down there without power for two weeks which I never could quite figure out. <laughs> Because wow. we're so far in the woods, but wow. So what do you think about that earthquake where that happened in New Jersey? Yes. Well, it, you know, people think earthquakes are a California thing or a Hawaii thing, and they're not. Um, I saw a, an interesting explanation from a physicist last night. Okay. He was talking about that um, apparently the in California the um, tectonic plates are very um, very close together uh -huh. and so earthquakes there are, they'll be felt in a, in a very concentrated area versus uh, there's one plate I think that goes from almost California to New York that's, okay. that's just one plate that was involved in that one on, on uh, Thursday and um, the uh, it, so it, it didn't it, it was felt over a wider area, and it wasn't as strong. 4.8 is a pretty pretty mild earthquake. Wow. It has to do with the location of the earthquake. It also has to do with how deep down it is. Um, the deep down earthquakes okay. um, will tend to be felt um, over a broader area versus the ones that are further up and felt more locally. At least that's what this guy was saying. <laughs> so it's not, I know you had said when the earthquake is coming, it's best to get in the middle of the door. Well, there's a, yeah, and actually if you stand in a door, that's what they always advise. Um, because the door is, the fact that you put a door in the wall means it's short up. Okay. Um, you know, it probably has a, a heavier beam over the top of it, and um, yeah, you tend to it tends to um, that's where they tell you to go. So. Well, I must tell you that you know, a lot of people say that God is coming back, but no one know the day or the hour when the Lord shall appear. But I must say that we must keep our faith, and you know that Jesus died and rose from his sin. Just be also ready when he is coming. I always pray, and I pray for everyone into the world. When you call upon me, Lord, forgive me for my sin, past, present, and future, but have mercy on my soul. But when you call upon me, just call me in the narrative. But let's keep on loving and enjoying your family, loved one. And let's stop this hatred. But you know what else? Now let's talk about something else. Let's go on something about these beautiful classic shows that I love watching with you. Well, you know I'm a big fan of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and I love the classic show. What got you so involved into all this classic? Oh, I just like old stuff. 
is always an old person in a younger person's body. <laughs> so, so the, the best thing that ever happened, as far as I'm concerned, from my entertainment, is uh, this Turner Classic movie coming on the air. I think now they're, I think they're celebrating their 40th anniversary. Whoa! And it's so cool to be able to, uh, to uh, see those old, those old time movies. Uh, some of which are really very, very good. Um, and quite honestly, most of the time, I would rather watch a movie from Turner Classic Movies than I would watch a modern movie. There are some exceptions. I've been to I've been to some movies in the theater in, in recent years that I've really, really liked. But um, it's an awful lot of it that's not very good. Well, I know what I love about the classic movies because of the the beautiful gowns and the fashion and the dress and style and the elegant and sophistication and how smooth in the way that they dance. I know I hear a lot of times when people ask me, who taught you, who trained you as a dancer? <clears throat> trained me as a dancer. Yes, I took a little model and dance class in high school, but that had only taken it not even for a year. But watching TV, and I love the way that I used to see Fred is there and James Brown. I would collaborate and mix them all together. Everyone had a beautiful classic move or sophistication. And you know Nat King Cole with his style of very smooth and elegant. So let's get into the silent movies. Oh, silent movies, yeah. yeah. I, I never cared much for silent movies <clears throat> until uh, <clears throat> I got interested in, in theater organs. I've always been interested in those, but um, only when I got involved with the American Theater Organ Society is when I actually got into theaters. I still had them, and they were accompanying silent movies. Um, and that is really something. But you, you watched know? the silent movies now, but you wasn't not interested in it. Well, I was, it. I was bored by them because, okay. um, you know, most of the soundtracks that they put with them weren't very good. Okay. Um, and were, were silent movie organists were trained to um, to react to, to movies. In split second time, the organs that they played were like Orchestras commanded by one person, uh -huh. um, and plus they were. I mean, the sound that comes out of one of those is every bit as good as the sound you hear in a, in a Dolby surround sound system in, in theater today. Um, they're they're big, they're powerful, they're and they did it all mechanically. There were no electronics, no loudspeakers. Um, it was all just air and pipes. You know? But uh, amazing, and then of course. The, the theaters themselves, those movie palaces from the late 19, or from the mid 1920s, 1919 or thereabouts, uh, they built for about 15 year period were just eye popping. Really? Uh, because people, well, first of all, they were built for live performance and movies. So they had stages and that would accommodate a live performance, dressing rooms and all the words, and, and then a big pipe organ. And then the, the houses themselves were, you know, in the bigger cities, they would. See five, six thousand people. Really? And um, the uh, so when when people went to a, a movie in the nineteen twenties, um, they went to an evening's worth of entertainment. Uh -huh. They had you know the organist there, they playing a prologue. They had in bigger cities. They had a full orchestra. Um, they had vaudeville entertainment, um, comedians and. and uh, Players and singers, and I mean, it was all on the, it was all on the, on the, on the, uh, all on the program for a, a dime. <laughs> for what? For a dime back then. That dime really? So let's get more into the silent movie actors and actress. So as a silent movie, they, I, I have a, I have a recording that I will be sharing with you all into this uh, podcast to show you how they really, if you never watched them, but how they really act in their face action among this into the silent movie. Give me more, how did, it, how, how did they really? Well, everything was facial expressions. Okay, the and, facial expressions. And if there was any dialogue at all, it had to be, um, put on what they call intertitles, which is... Intertitles. That, that's where 
where it comes up on the screen that what they're saying is written out. And comes up yes. Up. Okay. Like what I do sometimes with the text. Those are called inner titles or just titles. Okay. Yeah. And um, they originally, when sound first came to film, um, they they weren't talking. They weren't talkies right away. They were okay. Basically, um, they just put a, a musical accompaniment track. So that a theater that couldn't afford a big orchestra or a big pipe organ could have sound to go with the music to go with the movies. There was no nobody speaking. Um, even that. And why was no one really speaking back well, then? Well, they okay. hadn't conquered the technology of recording voices in the studio. Okay. Um, there were a lot of different problems. Um, there was a problem with just microphones being sensitive enough so that they could be hung, hung up high enough so they wouldn't be in the scene, or else they would hide them in bushes or. In the props, you know. Okay. And um, if you watch some of the original sound movies from the late, say, 1929, uh -huh. uh, you hear the sound kind of coming and going. It's not real steady when it comes to voices. Music, on the other hand, is at a constant level, so they didn't have to do anything to facilitate that. The other problem was the old cameras made a ton of noise. Okay. And so at first, what they had to do was they had to put the camera in a in a soundproof box which of course was murder for the camera operator because it got really hot. The other problem is the freedom of movement that the camera had, to, you know, the, the art the art of the camera yes. got completely lost because all they could do was just sit the camera in one place and focus on the scene. So those movies back then were like stage plays. Um, the camera didn't follow the action, couldn't follow the action. So it wasn't until they invented like the boom mic, which is the mic that hangs up over the actors and better better technology, better recording technology, that they finally got to the point where the sound movies were. It didn't take long. I mean, okay. if you look at a sound movie, 1929, and you look at one from, say, 1932, that's only three years, and yet it was light years different. So who came up with the idea of saying, let's do sound movies to present on television? Who are some of the... Uh, like the Warner Brothers, they came later. So well, the, te the television movies, that TV stations, a lot of the old movies... That who was the producers? Well, the big producers and were Warner Brothers. And oh, back in the... Si yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. but the, uh, the, the, the um, movies, old movies, they kind of just... A lot, a lot of old movies got lost. They got thrown away because nobody... Okay. After they ran their, you know, two weeks or a month at the theater, they just threw them away. And so a lot of great movies are lost. A lot of silent movies are lost for that reason. But what happened that started them preserving older movies uh -huh. in the 1950s, when television came out, and network television wasn't quite yet widely available, so local stations had to fill their airtime. And the only thing they could do was either have live shows in the studio, which is expensive, or they could um, rent these old movies from the 1930s and 40s from the big movie companies. And so that brought a whole new life to movies was television when television started. Wow. Yeah. So the silent movie like with Larry Hardy and some of the actors and then they start when Warner Brothers start because they start speaking uh Yeah, Warner Brothers had the first sound. It's called Vitaphone. The yeah. Warner Brother had the first sound. They did. Okay. And it was a disc. And it was called what again? Called Vitaphone. Vitaphone. And it was a 16-inch disc, like a 16-inch record, that had to be synchronized with the film. The sound was not on the film itself. Yes. And then um, RCA came out with a system, and Western Electric came out with a system that that allowed the film, the, the soundtrack, to be put right on the film. And oh. that's that's where we ended up. For a lot, of, in the very, very early days, a lot of studios were making two versions of the film, one with um, one with records and one with the sound on the film. Really? Because not all the theaters were wired up for sound on film. Oh. So, so when did they start speaking and getting roles to start speaking? The, the first uh, time that they actually had sp spoken dialogue in a film was Al Jolson's. Um, Al Jolson? Yeah, the... Um, Jessup. Okay. That was 1927. That was a real early one. 1927. Yep. And uh, only a t small part of it was spoken dialogue. And most of it was ad-libbed. Jolson just ad-libbed it. Oh, really? <laughs> and so if you watch the, 
the movie, the lady that's playing his mother, she's like looking at him like, okay, now what am I supposed to say? <laughs> it was really funny. And then, of course, all this, all of his sung parts, that was all, that was all. But the rest of the time, um, not only was it just um, orchestra background, but even the intertitles for the dialogue, because they, they didn't do all the dialogue. Really? So it's so it's very little of it is sound, but it was considered the first um, sound movie. It's the first sound movie. With, and what was yeah. the name of that movie I guess man? The Jazz Singer. The Jazz Singer. Yep. Yep. Oh. And wow. it's very actually a very good movie. Wow. Um, and it was uh, it was it, it just it caused a riot. I mean, there's pictures of the movie theaters, people standing in lines for blocks to get in to see that movie. Really? Oh yeah. It caused a riot? Not a riot, but just so, well, so many people, people wanted people to start to seeing to see it. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That was a big thing. And then was start getting more into movies and stuff. Cause I saw some of the classic movies, how these beautiful the cameras, how they have in the stage and all the beautiful art and how they have the oh the dancers all on these stage, but you said that's a small room. This well the sound stages were big. Oh really? Yeah, oh yeah, the sound stages were huge. I'm yeah. talking about with the dancers and everybody how they yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, the creativity they, Yeah, the sounds it. when they started building the sound stages, they built them pretty big. Um wow. had to because you know. When did they start building the sound stage? What year? About 1929. Oh, 1929. Yep. That was when all the studios finally realized that this silent era was over. And um, I think the last silent movies were probably made about 1930. Um, really? If, so if you that, was in that time to be able to watch some of that when you was a kid? Well, we you, there was no real place to watch silent movies. Um, oh. You know, we'd, you'd... You'd see them on TV every once in a while, but you know it was just kind of a curiosity. It wasn't really there was nobody that was really serious about curiosity. It. Kill the cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very interesting. I love the silent movie, but then they start speaking and start <clears throat> doing like dialogues, as you say. They they said, well, now 1929. You say. Mm -hmm. And they did a little short snippet, and then they started developing to get more into acting roles. Yeah, tw twenty-seven. Twenty-seven was when was the jazz singer came out. So the jazz it only took about two years. Two um, years in, after. The, in the two in the in that two-year period from nineteen twenty-seven to nineteen twenty-nine is when they uh, that's when the full talking movies started and the silence were done. And then open the doors for a lot of actors to start doing what they're doing today. Well, Broadway, Broadway actors. Broadway. Were, were in, Say were, it again. Broadway actors were in big demand really? um, in the early silent days because you know a lot of the a lot of the silent. That's correct. If you, if you and Broadway see, is like the Broadway in New York, and so uh, it's silent. That's what Broadway started coming ne, from. Many of the silent movie actors had terrible voices. Okay. Or couldn't speak well at all. Really. And they didn't have to. And uh, so when um, some of them lost their careers when sound movies came out because they didn't translate well, others okay. others did fine, you know. But it was the uh, oh, okay. uh, the uh, the big the big thing that they did when they originally came out with the sound films was musicals. They had everybody singing, even actors that couldn't sing, because they figured everybody wanted that. And they did for a couple of years, then the novelty wore off, so they wanted more serious movies. Wow. Uh, from there. Oh, interesting. Yep. Love it, love it, love it. Wow. So, coming up in five more years, we'll be, well, actually not five more years, three more years, we'll be celebrating the uh, 100th anniversary of the first talking movie. Of the first talking movie? Mm -hmm. 1927. It's, Wow. And that's that's uh, it's 2024 right now. So. Wow, how deep and interesting! <laughs> wow, I appreciate that history of the um, of giving me more, giving us the uh, education of how.
movie started and voices is silent. Now let's look outside and see this. There's still some snow up in here. Yeah, it's just still there. Right now it's um, like 55 degrees, so I don't think it'll last long. <laughs> it will not last long. Thank you all again. You're welcome. And we thank you. We're going to have some good editing into this uh, podcast. And you all keep on love, love, love. It's in the air. Do not allow any obstacle to come into your way to stop you from succeeding. What the God have planned for you today. Lay the love. <laughs> happy, happy podcast. Three chorus, you understand? And the third chorus, I whistle. Now give it to him hard and heavy. Go right ahead.